Okay guys, so uh, in the video, uh, the most overlooked item in home preparedness, I talked to you guys about this uh, pocket smoke mask. And I told you in the comments, I was like, hey, I'm gonna figure out a way to test this thing and take it out there and see if it actually works. Now, I wanted to cover a couple of things real quick before we get started. Um, so it says it's supposed to be rated up to 932 degrees Fahrenheit before this plastic film stuff will melt. It also says in the book, and I find this hard to believe, and that's kind of why I want to test this. Um, it says here in the book that it is designed to filter out all those things. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not, if you can read that. But basically, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, SO2, HCl, HS, HCN, formaldehyde, benzoyl, acrylic acid, and ammonia. And, you know, it's got a catalytic layer in there and all that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, it's supposed to actually filter out all that crap that will really incapacitate you. Like I said, I'm pretty skeptical on this. So, we're going to give it a shot here today. What I'm going to do, if you can tell, is I have built a smoke shelter. <laughs> and I'm going to start a little smudge pot fire down inside of this. Uh, this, this material over the edge here is a C9 canopy from a uh, fighter, fighter jet ejection seat. And it is pretty fire resistant. Um, you can get fire right up to it and it won't, you know, catch on, catch or anything like that. But I'm just going to build a small little fire. I've cleared out like a 10 foot or 12 foot circle of the leaves and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to put a little, little small fire right there in the center of it. And I'm going to put on some wet and damp leaves and stuff like that and just get it really smoky up inside of here. And then I'm going to put the hood on and I'm going to stand up in there while you guys watch and see you know how I can how I breathe if it's you know if it's hurting my eyes if it's if it's hard to breathe and all that kind of stuff and I'll try to stand there for you know I don't know five minutes something like that ten minutes I don't know we'll just see until you know until it seems like it's an effective test or whatever um, or I may only come out 30 seconds later coughing and hacking who knows and then once that's over with um, then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put some kind of sticks up in there uh, up into the hood once I take it off and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna build the fire up a little bit so that it's a, a decent flame fire, you know, it has pretty good flames on it. And then I'm gonna slowly lower that plastic uh, film down over the flames and see how resistant it is to melting. Because obviously that's a huge, you know, thing with this is taking a plastic bag basically and putting it over your head. It seems like it's gonna melt or something along those lines. So I wanna see how fire resistant it really is. Like I said, these things cost like 35 bucks. They're made in Japan. I don't really know a lot about them. I'm just kind of trying to figure out if they work and if they are something good, you know, to keep in a, uh, you know, in your home preparedness gear and all that kind of stuff. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and light this fire up real fast and then we'll get going. All right, let me get the hood out. See what it's like. Here we go. Not having any trouble so far.
trouble so far. It's actually fine. You can feel that the air is hot when you breathe it in, but it doesn't get in your eyes and it doesn't burn your, you know, uh, like throat or anything at all. It's just a little bit warm. I'm gonna put some more leaves on there and try to get a little bit more smoky because it's kind of cleared out somewhat, so. Okay, so we got some more smoke going. Um, I don't wanna put the fire out. It's kind of, kind of a delicate balance there. But uh, basically, seems to be working pretty good. I realize this is not the same concentration and the same type of chemicals that would be in a house fire, but it's really the best field test I can do. So I'm gonna change the angle so you guys can kind of see how smoky it is up in here. All right, put this mask back on. See how it does. Okay, so what I notice is when you put it on, um, there's definitely a degraded amount of oxygen that you're getting because you feel yourself breathing heavier and panting heavier. Um, but at the same time, you're still able to breathe. You know, you probably are getting less oxygen into your lungs because, you know, it's it's uh, filtering that out. But move this out a little bit. But you're still able to get what's there. I guess is kind of the impression that I'm getting. So while this isn't as dense of, of smoke as as a house fire would be. Um, I was also standing up higher in it. If I was in a real fire, I'd be laying down on the ground and that kind of thing. Um, but the cool part that I can see so far, and again, I'm, I've only been in it for a few minutes, so this isn't a conclusive test. But for me, as far as the filtering capacity, I can tell you that it makes it, it seems like it makes it easier to tolerate. So, and it doesn't, your eyes don't burn at all. Like when you normally get into a smoky environment, your eyes freaking tear up and it sucks. And this, with this on, doesn't do that. So how much it makes a difference on the oxygen and being able to breathe it, I think it's somewhat, I think it's definitely significant. Is it gonna, you know, allow you to breathe for 20 straight minutes like it says in a really densely thick fog environment? I don't know if it'll work that long. Um, but I can tell you it makes a difference for sure. Um, so I guess now the thing to do is let's see how flame resistant it is because if it melts to your face, then it ain't going to be any good, you know? So let me grab a couple of sticks and we'll try that out. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of put the mask on these sticks like this and just kind of lower it down over the flame and see at what point will it start to melt? I mean, it's not a hugely hot fire. You see the heat getting it. It's really not affecting it.
I mean, I'm putting it right down on the fire. It's not really, not really doing anything. Looks like it started to, just started to melt the rubber around the neck right there. When I got down over that part. As far as the polymid plastic though, I'd say it's pretty flame proof. Let's look at the filter. Ah, interesting. So on the inside of the mask, when I was holding it down over the flames, not sure if you can see that, but on the inside of it, looks like some of that actually started to melt from the heat on this backside. So, you know, that's not good. Um, but this stuff, as far as melting around your face, doesn't really seem like it's going to. Put it this way. No, that's fine. I mean, again, the the rubber is starting to melt a little bit. So, you know, that's not the best. But, overall, this stuff did pretty good, actually. I think I'm going to let it cool off and put it on one more time, see if I can get some more smoke built up in there. Maybe that'll go better. All right, what I'm going to do, too, is I'm gonna back up, readjust the camera, and I'm gonna show you how long I can stand in here without the mask. Okay, so no mask. <coughs> I can't stand there long at all. All right, let me try this. It's still working. <laughs> well, for 35 bucks, I think it's well worth its money. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, even the smoke coming out right now is bugging me. So on that last time, it was really smoky. I don't know if you guys could tell the difference on camera or not, but that last chunk of leaves really made it pretty thick in there. And even with the damage, you know, the damaged neck and the damaged filter, it's still working. I mean, I was able to breathe. Again, you notice a little bit increased respiration, but I mean, it wasn't my eyes weren't burning or anything like that. They got a little bit from before. Um, and a little bit now <laughs> but not bad I mean I was really skeptical on this thing and I know that people just don't talk about it very much but I'm pretty convinced I think the biggest you know danger area and thing that you need to know about you know when explaining how your kids to use it or you know how to teach your wife or whoever or whatever the case may be um, is that you know, flames on the polymid part aren't really going to hurt it at least as hot as those flames were. You know, now I don't know how hot that is. It's not going to be as hot as a house fire.
okay? But it says it's rated up to 932 degrees. So if there's any firemen out there that know how hot flames are in a house, they could throw that in the comments. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Iowa Woodsman, Iowa Woodsman, IA Woodsman. Um, if you know anything about that, I know you're a fireman. If you could uh, let us know how hot that gets or whatever, that'd be cool. Um, I'd be interested to hear your comments on this. I know you were concerned about whether or not it would filter out, you know, carbon monoxide and all that kind of stuff. And it seems like it does. I, I don't. I don't know for sure. Um, but it definitely makes it where I can stand inside of all that smokiness and breathe okay uh, a whole lot more than without it <laughs> you know so take that for what it's worth and I'd be interested to hear what you think about that um, the, the the big danger area in the fail point in this is letting flames get right up next to this now that being said they were resistant to the, to the flames it wasn't until I got them right down over the top of it that it actually started to melt. Um, and this is all right around your neck. So if you have flames that close around your neck, you're probably in a pretty hurting situation anyway. If you're down on the ground, crawling and trying to find your way out, if you've got a fire blanket that you're using in conjunction with this, then I think it's going to make a pretty good difference and it's going to do pretty good. And worst case scenario, if it did get, you know, if it did start to melt, then maybe you get some second degree burns or whatever on your neck. Um, I mean, that's going to suck, but it's probably going to be better than not being able to breathe and <laughs> being incapacitated, you know, due to smoke inhalation. Now it's also, if it does start to melt, you're also going to get some degradation of the seal around your neck. Um, but it's probably still going to be better than nothing. So anyway, guys, uh, that is, that has been the field test on the pocket smoke mask. Personally, after experiencing it, after seeing what the difference is between being in a smoky environment without it and being in there with the hood even after it's been degraded, um, I think it's worth 35 bucks and I think it's probably going to make a difference in your ability to get out of a house fire if you were stuck or to stay in a house fire for a prolonged period if you couldn't get out your normal exits or something like that. Now I do want to stress, and a couple people threw this in the comments and the other one below, number one is there is no substitute to getting out of the house fast and quick and not worrying about anything else, any other gear or anything like that, if you can, okay? If you can get out, then you need to get out. You know, don't mess with any other kind of gear or anything like that. This kind of stuff is stuff that I would say would be beneficial to put in a closet to, you know, to have it in each closet in the room or something, in the, in the home or something like that. If a case where, say, the house started on fire at night and you weren't aware of it until it was too late and until your normal exits or egress points were already blocked off, then you could grab something like this or something like a fire blanket or whatever the case may be, you know, fire ladder to get out the window or something like that. Um, these are last resort kind of things. You know, the first plan and the best plan is to get out of the house as soon as possible, get you and your loved ones and get out. Um, but if you're trapped, if for some reason you can't get out, then personally, I think this is better than nothing. There are probably more high quality ones that are out there. You know, I'm not saying that this is the best one. It's only 35 bucks. Uh, the, the, the cheapest ones I've seen are like 10 and you know, I've seen ones that are more expensive up into, you know, 150, 160, you know, so really whatever, whatever your budget is going to work is going to, you know, cover. But for me, um, I wouldn't have any problem and I won't have any problem because I'm going to get more of them for my house and for my kids and, you know, I'm going to put them in there and I'm going to show them how to use them and that kind of stuff and uh, I just don't see it as a bad thing. Now, again, take what I said with a grain of salt, do your own research, you know, this is not by any means a scientific test, um, it's, it's just not. It's not the same as a house fire. I fully acknowledge that. Um, but with the resources that I have available to me, this is kind of the best test that I could come up with to be able, you know, to at least kind of simulate it and see if it works at all or if it's a gimmick. And, and it definitely works to a certain degree. Now, again, like I said, I wasn't in there for 20 minutes or anything like that, but it, it made a difference. So, 
Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you've got any questions, please stick them in the comments below, and don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys. Oh, yeah, and look forward to a uh, review of the ribs pack. I'm liking this a lot so far. It's really pretty cool. All right, guys, stay safe.